Hello, world. If you've been a longtime subscriber of mine, you know I've been planning on opening up my own small business. And today, uh, June 1st, 2022, I opened up my own small business in northern Louisiana. So pretty exciting that it finally happened. We've been planning it for um, over two years now. One of the norms of being a small business owner is, of course, handing out physical business cards and also receiving right it's kind of customary for business owners to exchange business cards and so you receive business cards as well and i think that's valuable information so i wanted to create a business card reader that um, can take a picture of a business card and then extract the relevant data and then store it to an access database and that way you don't have to have a huge uh, thing of credit cards and so that's what we will be doing today so I made a um, business card reader and uh, let's check that out but first welcome to the 179th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics this is the fifth video in my small business automation playlist and you can watch that whole playlist by clicking here Please consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in Python and digital assistants and automation and 3D printers and robotics and all of that. So thanks and like this video if you enjoyed it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, database. Um, it's called Master Database. And I just created a quick little table called Business Cards. And in it we have empty columns for the name, the title, the email, and then um, if there's two, sometimes there's two phone numbers. Next, um, I'm going to take this uh, business card of this AT&T representative that she gave me. Uh, her name's April. She's a business expert consultant. Um, here's her email and then the two f telephone numbers. Okay. And now what we're going to do uh, is using a library called PyTesseract. So let's run this program. Um, it's not going to be a lot for you to visibly see what's happening until we go through the code. Uh, but I did put a little print statement that says uh, your database has been updated. So let me close out of this and reopen it. All right. So now we have the name now this id the primary key is 30 that's because i have uh, done a lot of tests prior to making this video so the the name was april vaughn the title was business expert consultant email phone number one and phone number two all right so now let's go through the code so uh first you'll need to go to this github.com uh tesseract ocr Tesseract wiki and then downloads and then you have to actually download the Tesseract file Then you can pip install pi Tesseract and Then you import pi Tesseract Then from PIL the Python image library import image with the capital I We're going to be using regular expressions. So import RE and um, I, I believe RE is a um is a native library and so is pill, but you have to import, you have to pip install PyTesseract and PYODBC. And this is how we're gonna access, um, access. So I created three functions. Let's look at those. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get just the card text. So let's just do that for a second, all right? So I'm going to assign a variable called card text equals read business card and then call this function. Okay, so this first function is um, going to do pytesseract.pytesseract.tesseract underscore command equals and then you put the full path of your tesseract file. When you download the tesseract file, this is typically where it downloads it if you have a Windows machine. And then just make sure we're reading it with an R and pass it the string. Next, we're going to do uh, image equals capital I, so image.open. And then you pass it the 
title of whatever the file is called that you're reading. Then the card text is we're going to equal pytesseract.image to string, right? So we're going to, um, this is the method for reading the image. Then we're going to pass it the image, which is up here. And then we're going to return that card text. Okay, so let's just run that function now. But it reads it literally, right? So each line by line, it's going to read it. And so you're going to end up with a lot of blank spaces, which we can handle. Um, so here's the name, a blank space, business expert, blank space, all of the information that's on the business card. Okay, we don't need all that information. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to extract that data from the business card. And so that way we can assign all that data into the things we want. And so to do that, let's, uh, let's print these out as well. Phone numbers, emails, name, and title. Okay, so we're going to pass that card text right back into this extract data where we're going to use some regular expressions. So, okay, we have, let me move my face. So we have this list of two phone numbers, this April, this um, email, the name, and the title, right? Just like we printed it out. Okay, let me delete that. So how we did that is we used this function called extract data and we passed it the card text. So here's the function called extract data. So regular expressions is a library that takes, if you have strings that you know are always formatted the same way, phone numbers, emails, etc., cetera, um, you can use regular expressions to extract that data and find it. Now what this I'm not going to do is a tutorial on regular expressions. So um, but this so we first we get this phone numbers equals re so regular expressions re dot find all we're going to read a string that looks like this right. So it looks like it starts with a um, what is this called a bracket or a parenthesis and it ends in one and it has some numbers before it and some dashes and ends with some numbers. So it's going to look for that kind of expression in the card text that we passed it from the previous function. The emails, it's going to uh, re.findall, same thing, read. Oh, this is bad programming. I have single quotes and double quotes. Anyways, it's going to look for numbers and letters before this at sign and then some numbers and letters after with a dot with some letters, right? So that dot is dot com, dot au, dot net, etc. So um, that's what it's going to look for. So that's the regular expression for email. It's going to look for that in the card text. Um, this will put it in a list. So find all puts it in a list whether there's one item or not. So we just want the email. Um, outside of a list, so email equals emails equal uh, zero, the first index. Now this one may or may not work. So I've, I've only tried it on this specific business card, but what I'm going to do is try it on more and more business cards and refine the regular expressions and add some maybe if then um, statements to capture different kind of cards. But for now, this regular expression um, to be honest, I can't really explain all of it to you, but it's basically looking for some numbers or some letters, not names, um, etc., uh, to find it. And then it's going to um, look for the title. So this should actually be title, sorry. Um, and then we're going to look for card text. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is going to look for just words. So just words, and we're going to assume that the uh, name comes before the title. So first, we're going to parse this name. We're going to try to find anything that has a name. 
And then we're going to find all in this. Anything that just has a bunch of letters in the card text. And then it creates, so this is a list right now, this name title. And basically, let's, let's, uh, oh, I don't want to print that out. Um, yeah, so basically it just has a list right now, but it's a single string of list. So right now it says new list equals word for line in name title for word in line dot split and find this end. You know what? We're going to have to, for you to understand this, uh, let's print this out. Name title, no print statement there. It's going to be one long string that we need to handle separated by dash n which is a line space. Um, so April N or April line space line space business expert line space line space and then it found AT but since we said ignore the at symbol so AT and T um, in the regular expression it didn't it stopped there. So what I'm going to do is this right here. So for each word in the line so for each of these words in this name title up here what you're seeing printed out here for word we're going to split it on this line n so basically it's going to find this n this first one i believe and split it here it's going to split here and there's nothing to split it by um so it's just going to leave a space then it's going to find this leave a space or it's going to split there then it's going to put this one in a space and then here and we can show you what that looks like by printing that new list. Print new list. Okay, so a Provan, and now we have just a blank spot, then the title, a blank spot, and then AT. So the name we're assuming is the first index because most business cards, I imagine the name would be first. So that's this one. We're going to skip the first index since that's the space. And then we'll do the third item or the second index, which is the title. And then we're going to return the phone numbers, emails, names, and title. Now, like I said, I'm explicitly hard coding this for this specific business card. So this name and title might not match the next one. So I'm going to have to add some if and then statements as we progress through different business cards. So then I'm going to take the phone numbers, emails, names and title. And remember, there's two items in these phone numbers right now. And then we're going to pass that into the database entry. So we're going to pass it the phone numbers, the email, the name, and the title. Now I've done um, videos on this before in the small business automation with access. So I'm not going to go over all of this and how to use it, but you need to define a driver. So I'm using access. You can do SQL. You can do other types of uh, ODBC databases. The file path is where your uh, database is. And then you're going to have to do my data sources equals PYODBC data sources access driver. And then even though it's grade, which is PyCharm's way of saying, hey, you have not used this variable, you still need this because you need to tell them that the data sources is an MX, MS access database. So even though you're not using this explicitly, um, you will get an error if you try to skip this line. Then we're going to set up a connection. You may also see another um, documentation, CNXN for connection. And then cursor might be CURS. But anyways, connection equals PYODBC dot connect. You pass it the driver and the database location, DBQ equals file path. Now, there is um, a PyCharm error here, but it still runs fine without it. It's actually looking for another string which we don't need. And then we're going to establish a cursor equals connection dot cursor. And then we're going to do a SQL statement called dot execute and we're going to insert into business cards. So this is the um, table that we have. Name, title, email, phone number one and phone number two, which are the columns. And then we're going to pass it. This is just a line space here. Um, 
So if this can be deleted and this can be deleted if it was on the same line, we're going to pass it the values, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, which means that we will dynamically pass variables to it. But if you already know the name of the person, you can just type it in like this. But we're not going to do that. Uh, uh -oh. And then comma, the comma is important. Then the parentheses, we're going to pass it the name, the title, the email, the first phone number in phone number one, and the second phone number in phone number two. Now, like I said, I've hard coded this part of the um, program. I'm pretty confident that most business cards only have two numbers, but if there's only one phone number, I might get an error. So um, I can do if the length of phone numbers equals one, then do this. If it equals two, then do this. If there's more than two, then we will maybe have to pass dynamic columns, but I think that's rare. I don't know. Then you do a connection.commit, which actually sends the data. And then print your database has been updated. And that's just to let me know that the program has uh, updated. And then that's it. And then these are the functions we just went through. So um, you can buy business card reader programs. I don't know how expensive they are, but why buy one when you can spend hours and hours programming one yourself that you still have to work on, right? That's a programmer's thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you did. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.